Oh my goodness. Well, uh, hello, Mark. I think you're seeing this for the first time, although I can't believe anybody has kept this from you. Uh, surprising you is nothing none of us has ever been able to do. I actually thought I might run into you on the way here this morning. What can I say about Mark McHenry? Um, aside from being one of the nicest people I have ever met in my life, uh, Mark is also one of the most knowledgeable and uh, responsive people that I have I've ever met. I think probably the one thing that I uh, have never been able to figure out about you is how I can leave one meeting that I'm with at you five minutes ahead of you and you're there when I get to the next one. Uh, I haven't been able to figure that out. I don't know if you have some automatic control over stoplights or, or what. One of my favorite things about Mark is how whenever I would ask him for background on anything, it was always met with something that kind of went like this. Now let me tell you the story about that. And he would proceed to go into the Rolodex of information and basically a Google um, of sorts that happened in his brain and he could recall um, details that maybe dated back decades and could bring me up to speed on any issue. Well, I've had the uh, good fortune to know uh, Mark McHenry for over 20 years now uh, in my role, various roles with the city. And during that time, I can honestly say I've never had a work conversation that didn't cost me money. Uh, Mark is a passionate um, defender of his park system. He takes it personally, and it costs me money every time I have a conversation. We had a Saturday swim meet, and we had invited the, uh, the enlistees from the United States Navy installation down on Cleaver 2 to come up and challenge uh, our administration. So it was Mark and Steve, and I don't remember who the other two swimmers were. And we held everything up for just one mo moment while we told them what their challenge was, and that was to ride a blow-up shark across the pool and back. And finally came Mark's turn. Keeping in mind how cold the water was, and he didn't, he didn't blink an eye, he jumped in, he crawled on his shark, and he paddled like a son of a gun across the pool of back. And the Parks and Recreation Department ended up winning and beating the United States Navy. We called them SEALs. They, they were not SEALs. They were kind of like walruses, but we had a good time doing it. So I was going to compare Mark McHenry to the great baseball player Cal Ripken of the Baltimore Orioles because he was in the dictionary under reliability and consistency and hard work over many years. But then I realized that I was actually doing Mark McHenry a disservice because Cal Ripken didn't work nearly as hard as Mark McHenry in his 21 years of baseball as Mark McHenry worked in his 44 years as a Parks and Rec executive. Uh, with all the projects, and I kind of call you the juggler, because you have so many projects going on at once, but you always keep your cool and your calm, and they always come out just right. My partner, Steve McDowell, came in my office one evening, um, and we were working on the new Ronald McDonald House expansion. And Steve asked me whether I thought it would be possible for the park department to do a land swap or a land lease for, to give Ronald McDonald more land. And I told Steve, I said, you know, I don't think the city's charter or the park department charter would even allow that to even be discussed. But I said, you know, I think Mark's a good friend. I'm happy to call him and see what he said. And when I called Mark, I was stunned because he said, you know, that's not as crazy as you might think it is. And it was really the beginning of change for the park department and really thinking in terms of public by private partnerships and how the city and the community could really benefit. And it was a point of change. Oh, one of the things that I was a little surprised that wasn't mentioned in the uh, write-up, a biography of Mark McHenry, was that he was very instrumental in getting the historic system on the National Register. And without Mark, I don't think that would have occurred. When I think about Mark and, and what, what he's done for our community, you only have to look around the whole city to see uh, in 44 years you touch a lot of places and a lot of people. And, and Mark has always been a man of action. And, and I always say you judge a man not by what he says, but what he does. And, 
And when you when you look at the, the just the the body of work that he's done over the years, uh, it really just speaks highly of of his uh, integrity and and his attention to detail and his overall caring for our community. You know, as Mark and I have met with, I I can't tell you how many meetings we've been in in together with with other individuals, and it always seems we always introduce ourselves almost like. Uh, we're related or something, and, and that relationship stems from our growing up in the same hometown of, of Fort Dodge, Iowa, about five hours north of here. Uh, I, I think we both now refer to it as the edge of the tundra. Uh, but funny that two of us landed down here in Kansas City working together uh, to make Kansas City Parks, the Kansas City Zoo, a much better place. Uh, Mark is a little bit younger than me, not much, but a little bit. We, we weren't in uh, the same class. Uh, but, but both graduated from there, didn't know each other in high school, and it kind of came about after uh, Barb and I were here. I think it may have happened at a, at a reception that Patty Garney had uh, for Barb and I when we arrived in town and talking about uh, oh, where you came from and a little bit of that, kind of that normal cocktail party chit-chat and uh, came up that, uh, where'd you grow up? Oh, Fort Dodge, Iowa, and yeah, we still have family there. And Mark was like, oh my God, that's, that's where I went to high school. So, so it's always been fun to reference that and talk about uh, the good old days in Fort Dodge. And uh, you know, maybe someday there'll be a billboard on the edge of town as you're ending Fort Dodge. Uh, says, Fort Dodge, Iowa, home of Mark McHenry and Randy Wistop, <laughs> the two great guys from Kansas City. <laughs> but I do have one story that's a little funny that I think people might see a different side of Mark on. Uh, and that is I had no idea that he's kind of a car nut. Um, and I found out by accident one day he needed a, a ride home from work. And I had just bought a Tesla Model S that went zero to 60 in about three seconds. Um, and so I said, well, Mark, why don't you drive? And he just had a blast. I, I, you know, I saw this man that was my age basically turn into a 20-year-old. <laughs> and he just had so much fun driving that car. And I, and I thought maybe that a lot of people didn't realize that, that he was such a car nut, because I certainly didn't. You know, I, I became so fond of Mark that I invited him to my wedding and was having it at uh, the Buck O'Neill Community Center, which Parks has also had a great hand in redeveloping, and it could not have been more beautiful. So thank you, Mark, and thank you, Parks, for uh, making my, my wedding beautiful and memorable. Mark, let me tell you that when I was put on the Park Commission, I saw Holly and I saw Anita, but I saw you. And we didn't offer you the directorship because we felt you were too young at that time. But we knew, we knew we had a shining star. And it behooves me to tell you that I'm really a sad day because I know we have great people behind you coming up, but our thoughts are with you and what you've done for this city. God bless you. There's no question, Mark, that you are the best park director in the whole country. And I think it's fine for you to retire as long as you keep on working. Thank you. One of the things that I learned about Mark early on when I became a commissioner and was privileged to attend um, some state and national parks conferences Mark was known and was sought out by virtually everyone there. And I learned very quickly they at least had two agendas. One was to see if they could get a job working for him in Kansas City. The park department was so well thought of and so esteemed. And the other one I learned was how many people would have loved to have attracted and recruited Mark McHenry away from Kansas City so they could benefit from his tremendous leadership and his knowledge. I would say to Mark, thank you for staying in Kansas City. Thank you for leading us and providing the vision for so many years because I know you had lots of other choices of places to go. Mark, as Mike and I returned from our son's wedding in Oregon, we reflected upon our over 40 year relationship with you. It is the most difficult task to summarize our past history with you. So, in light of your fondness for poetry and in deference to your McHenry-like style, we jointly compose this ditty for you. Now, most of you may not know that he is a prolific 
poet. Uh, I didn't say professional, I said prolific poet. But I thought maybe the best way for me to express my gratitude and comments to Mark was through a poem that I myself have written. He came to Parks with a head full of hair. He stayed so long, his head is almost bare. But every team must have a leader who provides a vision and course, who knows when to use gentleness, humor, and sometimes brute force. And you've brought so many people into the fold and educated them and given them the same infectious attitude and brought them in with the same spirit of cooperation and gotten them turned on to Parks and Recreation. You are the epitome of a Parks and Recreation professional and someone who made a tremendous impact and difference. Thanks for helping me along the way, and I hope you get to enjoy the sunset years of your life. So do you, we now say, with gratitude and praise. We would have stayed longer had you given us a raise. Consider what you've done, provided leisure opportunities for us all, beautiful places and spaces we can visit spring, summer, winter, and fall. Uh, I, I'm so deeply appreciative of your willingness to uh, spend yourself for the mission that we care passionately about, which ultimately uh, is about providing the sort of civic space and uh, community engagement that great cities need. Mark, I really look forward to hearing all about your retirement, and I hope we stay in touch. And congratulations on your 44-year career with Kansas City, Missouri, overseeing over 12,000 acres of parkland. And by the way, thank you so much for all you have done for dog parks in Kansas City. Um, we needed them, and uh, Liberty loved them, and we love them too. Thanks. The work, I believe, that was started by George Kessler over a century ago, you have continued to make a long-lasting impact on quality of life, on, on, on a great place to live here in Kansas City. It's been amazing. So on behalf of all of my friends and colleagues at Jackson County Parks Plus Rec, Mark, congratulations. We will miss you. Mark, on behalf of the Missouri Park and Recreation Association, all of our staff, all of our members, past, present, and future, thank you for all that you've done for us throughout the years. You've accomplished so much within the framework of your life, none of which could have been without a supportive family and wonderful wife. Mark, congratulations, uh, and best wishes to you and Debbie on your new adventures. Mark, congratulations on your thousand years of service to the city of Kansas City. Happy for you, happy for your family. Enjoy that retirement and know that you've left this city much, much better than you found it. Uh, Mark, uh, want to wish you well in your retirement. Hopefully you're able to uh, bike a little bit more and uh, take a little bit more time for yourself. And uh, just want to say we're going to miss you a lot. Okay, Mark, so it's not congratulations. It's not goodbye. It's bicycle. See you on the bike path. I appreciate your wisdom the size of the projects that you're not afraid to tackle. And I'm glad that you've included me in, in some of your planning for the future. But uh, right now, hang in there, stay on my board, don't go anywhere, and I'll make sure that you're, you get a plaque someplace. So the one thing I hear often is, man, you've got some big shoes to fill. I looked around the office, I found them, it's going to take all of us to fill Mark McHenry's shoes. Mark, it's hard to believe that we're here talking about your retirement. You're such a big part of this city and the department. It's been a privilege to work with you. Good luck with everything that comes next. Thank you for all you've done. You know about Mark, I'm so pleased that you're retiring, Mark, because finally you can afford a pair of pants. This community is thrilled that we will not have to see you in shorts and a tuxedo ever again. Congratulations on your retirement, and we'll see you soon, my friend. So, Mark, we wish you and your family many wonderful adventures. Enjoy. In closing, I would say, I will see you, my friend, on the golf courses and trails, and perhaps, if not there, in my basement drinking Irish red ale. Kind of 
congratulations or shout out or well wishes or whatever, and you're talking now directly to Mark. Sure. Or looking at the camera. Now. <laughs> I. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think I would get choked up, but thank you, Mark. Thank you um, on behalf of all of Kansas City from east to west and north to south. Um, this whole city is better because of you and your dedication and the hours and the hard work that you have given over the course of your time with Parks and Recreation. We love you and we're going to miss you.